What up dudes today? We are back with a brand new video. We've been getting a lot of questions about the event in Salterra and we wanted to do a quick breakdown on the pros and the cons of this sick whip. Okay, let's start with the pros. Number one, this is, in my opinion, one of the best looking e-bikes on the market right now. Followed closely behind would be the Zoos 1100 and then next would be the Zoos Ultra Flex 1200. Number two, the bike is super lightweight and easy to transport. A lot of people do not take this into account when buying an e-bike. It's super important to look and see how much the bike weighs. This bike weighs about 42 pounds, which is super light for an e-bike. You can make it even lighter by taking the battery off. So before I load the bike into the car, remove the battery, then put the bike in the back. A lot of people do not think about this factor until they're actually trying to load the bike into their car and it's super annoying. So beware of those big giant fat tire e-bikes because those things weigh a ton. Okay, number three, this thing is super sleek. It's got the slim tires and it's very nimble. So you can very easily weave through the streets and traffic as well as weaving through bike trails and avoiding pedestrians. Number four, this bike is super comfortable. You're in that upright seated position with the flat handlebars. It's definitely a really comfortable bike to ride, especially if you're on smooth pavement. Now, due to the lack of suspension and the skinny tires, when you hit a bump on this thing, that's not so comfortable. It's definitely not made for any kind of off-road use, even though I still use it off-road all the time. Number five, this is another thing a lot of people don't take into account. This bike looks just like a regular bike, which is great because you just blend in with all the other other bikers. You don't look out of place when you're on the bike trail. Everybody thinks you're on a regular bike. And the same thing with riding on the street. Number six, this bike is also super quiet. It's got that smaller motor and battery. And so it doesn't make a lot of noise, which adds to the normal bike look and not standing out amongst the other regular cyclists. Number seven, this bike actually encourages you to pedal the thing and get a decent workout. Workout. So with a lot of these e-bikes, we get so lost in the idea of getting more and more power. And we forget about the fact that the whole point to getting on the bike in the first place is to get a decent workout. Okay, number eight, this bike is great for getting around town, whether you're just riding it for fun or whether you're using it to commute back and forth from work. It's also great if you are a moderate drinker, you can ride this thing to the bar and not worry about having to drive your car home. And number nine, this bike is extremely versatile. You can take this thing on paved roads, bike trails, take it on the street. I've taken it on gravel, dirt bike trails. I've also taken it in rain, ice, every element you can think of. And although it's not intended for any of those circumstances, it holds its own. All right, so let's get into the cons. Number one, this thing has a pretty small battery and motor. So that is great in terms of the lightness of the bike, but the downside is, I'm really envious of people who have those big motors and batteries when they fly by when I'm going about 20 miles per hour. A bike that I mentioned earlier, the Zoos 1100 may be the best bike when it comes to the perfect medium. It's only 20 pounds more than the Event in Salterra. However, you can go up to 33 miles per hour uh, as opposed to 20. Number two. The other really disappointing thing is that Aventon used to give you the ability to bypass that top speed of 20 miles per hour in the app. However, they have since blocked you from being able to do that. I hope Aventon will reconsider this and at the very least increase the speed when they make the second generation of this bike. So number three, in addition to that low top speed, this bike also has incredibly low torque. There is a major delay. When you hit the throttle, you slowly start to go. Another major con of this bike is the frickin' chain comes off all the time. Now, once you put it back on a few times, it becomes pretty easy to pop it back on, but it is really annoying. Uh, finally, one other major con to this bike is the fact that it is pretty fragile. I've had quite a few crashes on this bike. In fact, yesterday I had the pleasure of being hit by a car, which was great, and thankfully I was okay. The driver was a complete jerk. 
as usual. Bingies knows what's up. She gave him a piece of her mind. She barked at that dude. She told me that she might bite his wiener off. I said, hold off on the wiener biting. Let's handle this like a couple of adults. In conclusion, despite the negative things I've said about this bike, it's a great bike. I literally ride every single day. We can only hope that with the second gen, we do get that higher torque and higher top speed. They really don't need to change much about this bike other than that motor and the battery and you've got something perfect 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 did you like that video perfect please like and subscribe did you hate that video perfect please like and subscribe much appreciated